Hey everyone, before we open today's file, please make sure to follow us on Instagram at d.s.radio where you can find all the images that go along with today's case. You can drop us an email at contact.dsradio at gmail.com. You can find all of our socials in the Linktree bio on our Instagram profile, including links to merch. If you're feeling especially generous, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dystopian simulation radio, where you can get access to our exclusive Instagram page and make suggestions for upcoming episode topics that you would like us to cover. Speaking of Patreon, thanks to our Patreons, Riff Cult, Cropley Crab, Cash Broadus, Raspberry Jr., Jason R. Nelson, Creepy Paper, Jamie Suit, Michael Laughlin, Lindsay Keller, Mike Wright, Gria Weaver, Kelsey Carithers, Linz Gibbon, Drake Holvig, Only Child, Michael M, Wesley Akers, Riaz K, Emily Medeiros, Pip, Heather Wynn, Graves, Devin Sweatshirt, The Ordained Sinister Minister, and Philip Hoffman. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dystopian Simulation Radio. I'm your host, Chris. And I'm Linz. And how are you doing today, Linz? Um, been in a constant state of uh, anxiety. <laughs> but I'm feeling a bit better now, obviously. I'm laughing. Great, so just fine. Yeah, peachy, it's perfect. <laughs> no, I had, a, um, I had to get my bloods taken, as usual, so... And no matter how many times I do it, I still can't sleep the night before. I'm not scared of needles or anything, and it doesn't hurt. I just, I'll never get used to it. I don't like it. So yeah, it affects my entire day. But now I'm feeling a lot better, um, especially now that we're going to record an episode because you're telling me the story today, so I get to sit back and listen to it. And it's always a blessing when you come up with a topic, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Will it be Hulk Hogan? Uh- Will it be the men in black? Who knows? <laughs> You'd be surprised how much those two things intersect. <laughs> how are you then, Chris? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Um, uh, the sun is finally out. It has been raining in England for uh, about eight months straight. <laughs> and finally, the sun is pouring in. It is June and we have yet to have a hot day. Yikes, but July and August. Why are we talking about the weather again, Chris? Whenever I ask you how you are, Be- you always talk least about the weather. British. Tell us how much you're suffering. Let us relate to you. <laughs> oh, no one says so much suffering, just as sleep deprived. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure everyone can relate. For some reason, everyone who listens to us relates to us on the tired, burned out level, <laughs> which we appreciate. Mm. But you keep smiling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> put that mask on <laughs> smile for just it just like the olden times come on it helped them yes. <laughs> they're all fine Stiff up a lip. <laughs> all right <laughs> okay well before we jump into today's topic just to remind everybody you can find the images from today's episode over on instagram and uh, that is at d.s dot radio mm-hmm. you can also if you're feeling especially generous nice <laughs> generous if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're feeling like uh uh, uh the, that guy at the end of a christmas story a christmas story christmas carol what's it called yes but he's like you there what day is it <laughs> go and buy the biggest 
goose they've got in the shop. But they didn't have any goose <laughs> or geese because it was bloody Christmas Day. So it was a bit of an empty promise. Um, so what you're saying is, what you're saying is you there go and become a Patreon subscriber to DSR and help us support the podcast. You there! Good, good. Join our, our Patreon at, at patreon.com. I've turned it to Boris Johnson. Now. Just join the <laughs> Patreon if say, you like this. You're giving me like nightmare flashbacks here. <laughs> but Linz, yes. we do have to say thank you very much to our Patreons. And, and today, you are going to read the list. And I've been reliably informed that you are going to pronounce all the names correctly. No, you know what? I, I think it's a fluke that I've ever pronounced anyone's name correctly. But I do have the list in front of me. I'm going to give it a shot. Can I do a knuckle crack? Warning, everyone. Skip two seconds ahead. Okay. Oh, that was <gasps> terrible. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Every hair on my body is standing on end and I've got a lot of hair. Jesus Christ, you must be like a porcupine. <laughs> Wife down. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you to the Patreons this month. And they are Beatrice. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Boop, boop. Beatrice Yombra. Hulk Daddy. Or AKA Paul K. Daddy. Ordained Sinister Minister. Devon Sweatshirt. Graves. Heather Wynn. Riff Cult. Cropley Crab. Cash Brodus. Creepy Paper, Jamie Sook, Michael Laughlin, Lindsay Keller, Mike Wright, Gria Weaver, Kelsey Carithers, Linz Gibson, Drake Halvig, Only Child, Michael M, Wesley Akers, Riaz K, Emily Medeiros, Pip, and Philip Hoffman. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. I hope I pronounced your names right. Probably didn't, but I tried. <laughs> But you can catch the flack for it this week. So thank you very much for reading that, Linz. And thank you, everybody uh, who supports us on the Patreon. But even if you don't, uh, we just appreciate you listening to the podcast. And um, thank you very much. So let's uh, let's move on then to today's episode. Yes, I'm excited. So, I don't know why. <laughs> is it because you didn't have to do any work? I've done a lot of work, Chris, and this week <laughs> I get to sit back and listen to your work. <laughs> well, Lens, previously we have investigated, and you can listen to both of these episodes in the archives, if Hitler and Elvis are still alive, oh. re respectively, not together. Oh, God, don't start that conspiracy theory. <laughs> and we concluded... That they definitely were still alive. Your words, Linz, not mine. <laughs> Is that what I, was that my conclusion? I think it was. Yes, definitely. Okay. I'll stay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but today we're actually going to do the opposite. Oh. We're going to try and prove that somebody we conventionally believe to be alive is actually dead. Oh my God, is it Avril Lavigne? It's not Avril Lavigne, oh. but we are going to talk about Avril yes. Lavigne a little bit later <laughs> today. Can you think of anyone else who who has been um, accused of dying and being replaced? Oh, God. Um, a lot of people. Oh, Paul McCartney. Well done. Yes. He claims to be alive. <laughs> yeah. But sure. can we believe Paul. him? Paul. <laughs> mm. Well, we're going to get it all in today into the weeds on this conspiracy that Paul McCartney actually died and was replaced by somebody else. But I thought, you know what, Linz? Mm -hmm. All too often we sit around speculating. Yeah. You know, we get it. You know, that's what we're doing, really. We're speculating on circumstantial evidence. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to pick up the phone book. I'm just going to call Paul McCartney, or at least the entity that now calls itself Paul McCartney. Wait, wait. Like literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I gave him I gave him a call. <laughs> you're so silly. <laughs> I I do not know why you're laughing. <laughs> so I gave him a call and uh, I recorded it. That's a bunch of shite. I'm still alive. Do you think they really replaced me? And now you're going to make a whole dystopian simulation radio podcast about this? 
like an hour? Are you serious? <laughs> Why don't you just make the second part of the Loch Ness Monster episode already and leave me alone? I'm Paul <laughs> McBloody Cartney. How did you even get this number, Chris? <laughs> Fuck you, Paul. There's a lot of information yeah. to go through, all right? <laughs> Uh, quite quite a rude man, really. How dare um, he? You know how I many know. times I played Hard Day's Night? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so his number is in the yellow pages, by the way, so feel free to, to pepper him with calls. And he seems to personally uh, after... know you, Chris. Well, he seems to personally know you as well. <laughs> he's obviously a fan. Perhaps he's actually Drake Halvig. I th you know what? Well, he just appeared in our lives, didn't he? I mean, that's not a co that like how can that just be a coincidence? It's got it. It's a, he's it's basically a, Paul um, McCartney. <laughs> if you jumble up the letters, it spells Paul McCartney. <laughs> well, anyway, after that that shocking introduction to this case, let's talk about a little band called the Beatles. Linz, have you heard of them? Can't say I have, Chris. Well. That's a shame, because you probably won't be able to ask to my next question, which is, what is your favourite Beatles song? Oh, gosh. Um, probably something off Hard Day's Night. I can't choose, but I know that the Hard Day's Night record is my favourite. I like the older Beatles. And um, mm -hmm. actually, I don't know if listeners know this, but we sort of like had a massive boner for the Hard Day's Night movie and the record. Mm -hmm. um, around the time we first met, because we studied it in film class. We did. Yeah. And, um, we did. Yeah. I played bass, you played guitar. We did a little bit of a... Did we try... Yeah, we tried to play like eight days a week once. I still remember that bass line off by heart. It was like the first walking yep. bass line that I ever played. And I still <laughs> can play it, despite not playing bass in forever. But yeah. Um, God, I... Well, you taught me how to play guitar. Did I? Well, kind of. You were like, this is how you read tabs. Oh. And yeah. and go and buy a guitar. Yeah. And then I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I guess I play guitar now. Yeah, and then we we, uh, we made up songs in uh, your mom's garage. That was pretty funny. <laughs> we did. Right, but yes, I would say... Um, yes. Something of Hard Day's Night. And you? Ah, interesting. Uh, I would say Break Stuff. <laughs> But by Limp Biscuit. I, okay. Have you made an AI version of like the Beatles doing break <laughs> stuff? Is that what's going to come up next? <laughs> don't don't reveal all of my secrets. <laughs> um, no, I would I would also say my 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 actual genuine favorite song of the Beatles is Hard Days Night. Oh, like the song um, itself. I know that the hmm. yeah, I, I know that their later period is more lauded by people, but I've got a soft spot for those early days. Not to criticize the the later part, but. You know, but that is fine. But I do also love Eight Days a Week mm -hmm. as well. That's a, a fantastic song. And I mean, really, you kind of you can't go wrong. Can't go much. wrong with a hard no. day's night. Can't go wrong with it. <laughs> no. Um, do you have a favorite Beatle? I know that our old film teacher wouldn't appreciate me saying this, but it is Paul McCartney. <laughs> oh. I know everyone loves John Lennon and, you know, but Paul McCartney it just is. <laughs> And you? Yeah, our, our, our old teacher absolutely despised. Yeah, I don't know why. Paul was there like a deep-seated jealousy issue there? Yeah. He was a Smiths fan, though, mainly. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> um, well, perhaps that he would like this episode then, um, because it, it purports that Paul is uh, is no longer with us anymore. I think my favorite. It changes. It changes. To be you honest, you love George, don't you? I think you? at the moment, I did. I did really like George. Mm -hmm. um, I think I actually know what I really like Ringo. I know. I, got, I, I he was my second choice. Soft spot. <laughs> yeah. Soft spot for all Ringo mm. stuff. But anyway, let's rewind for a moment. Who is Paul McCartney? A liar. That's <laughs> a dead man yeah. walking. <laughs> Shocker number one for this episode, Linz. Mm -hmm. His name isn't even Paul. What? It's not like his middle name or something, is it? It's his middle oh name. Oh my god! Why did they used to do that back in the days? Any any idea? Oh, I actually don't what know. What is um, his real name? All right. Okay, let's think. An old 
is it like a Christian name? Is it like John? Mm-hmm. Is it John? Ooh, 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 no, you're, you're close. You're close. Another James. J, another Christian name beginning. Yes. Oh my exactly. God, I got that in two guesses. Yes, I knew it would be a disciple. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> James Paul McCartney. Ah. Paul is his middle name. Mm. So. James is a bit hipstery. In... Paul suits him more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he doesn't look like a, like a James. He doesn't know. <laughs> um, I mean. Uh, so he was born in 1942 on the 18th of June. Wait, it's his birthday. It is. Oh. It is his birthday today. So the day we are recording this, he turns 82 years old. So happy birthday, James McCartney. Happy birthday, James. We know you're listening. Love you. <laughs> uh, but he's no spring chicken, though. No. So, you know, you might not remember that he's actually dead. <laughs> so dark <laughs> so james or paul i suppose was of course born in liverpool in the uk nothing much happened to it until 1954 when he met a fellow schoolboy on the bus and struck up a friendship that child was george harrison and the two the two <laughs> the two and the two soon became close pals Paul picked up his musical tendencies from his father, who played the trumpet and kept a piano in the house, that Paul learned, not by taking lessons, but by ear. In 1957, Paul met John Lennon and was invited to join his band, The Quarrymen. And this was a band that would morph into the band that you're thinking of, yes, The Rolling Stones. <laughs> The Quarrymen. Wait, wait, were the Rolling Stones called the Quarrymen? No, no, no. It, it wasn't the Rolling Stones. Oh, that was, it sorry, was the that autism. <laughs> An autism moment. <laughs> so, no, they did morph into the Beatles um, <laughs> later on. You're going to leave that in and I'm just going to let you. <laughs> the Beatles would go on to become possibly the most influential band in modern music, but not before adding their secret weapon, Ringo Starr, on drums. With a complete band, the Fab Four would become rocketed into superstardom, releasing hit after hit after hit, breaking America and becoming global megastars, the likes that had never been seen before. Bigger than Jesus. With John, (laughs) even joking that they were more popular than Jesus, which, uh, let me tell you, that just went down a storm in the Bible Belt. (laughs) Nobody had any issues with that. It was fine. (laughs) Now, skip forward a little bit, and unfortunately, the band eventually broke up after recording their final album, Let It Be, in 1970. John was unfortunately assassinated in 1980. George unfortunately died of cancer in 2001 and Ringo voiced the first season of Thomas the Tango. <laughs> Poor bugger. Post Beatles, Paul went on to form several bands, most famously Wings, and had a successful solo career up until the present day. But what if all of this was a lie? What if at a certain point, Paul, the real Paul, died and was switched with a look-alike. This is what we shall investigate today, Lens. But before we dive into it, I know you're partial to a bit of Beatlemania, so what do you think of it, the idea on the surface? Could Paul not actually be Paul? Well, I mean, he isn't because he's James, but (laughs) could James Paul not actually be James Paul? Um, First of all, I I barely remembered this, but it just came back to me. My old, my first boss, the first job I ever had, he was a drummer and he auditioned for Wings. So I may have known someone who had a brush with the fake Paul McCartney. (gasps) Yeah. Goodness. But uh, yeah, um, what do I think of it? What was the question? (laughs) (laughs) What do you think of this idea? 
they are plausible, do you think it is, that, that Paul McCartney could have been replaced with a lookalike? Do you know what I think, right? I think that around that time, there was a lot of people who kind of looked like that. And if you put a little, like, oh, wait, when around when are we... Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get into, into this in, okay, well, in a moment, but it's uh, the the mid sixties. Okay, if the if it was yeah the mid sixties, the younger McCartney, I think there was a lot of people who kind of looked like that around the time, and he did start to look a little bit different as he aged. So you could kind of slide in a look like, but they can like, but they say that about like so many musicians that they're dead and they've been replaced, <laughs> like if they their style changes or something. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I might need a bit more information before I okay. have a comment on it. So I think we might have to dig a bit deeper, Chris. And I'm sure you've done the investigating. Okay, then. Well, we'll we'll come. We'll circle back mm -hmm. to this this big question. Yeah. Um, but we have to first investigate the question that of you know where does this come from? Yeah. Where did this idea actually begin? And while it all seems to have started from January 1967. Beatles official fan magazine, The Beatles Monthly Book, which was obviously um, the days before marketing existed and they just called things <laughs> what they were. The good old days when you knew what you were going to mm. get. <laughs> and this monthly book referenced a rumour that Paul had been killed in a car accident on the M1 in the second half of 1966. Just like Vin Diesel. And Ricky Martin <laughs> yeah, and everyone else who's died in a car wreck, apparently, but never really did. Mm. <laughs> so if you could read this, please, Lance. Mm -hmm. False rumour. Stories about the Beatles are always flying around Fleet Street. The 7th of January was very icy, with dangerous conditions on the M1 motorway, linking to London with the Midlands, and towards the end of the day, a rumour swept London that Paul McCartney had been killed in a car crash on the M1. But of course, there was absolutely no truth in it at all, as the Beatles press officer found out when he telephoned Paul's St. John Wood's home and was answered by Paul himself, who had been at home all day with his black Mini Cooper safely locked up in the garage. Mm. Wow, great reporting. Okay. <laughs> Why do well, I feel like know, someone just absolutely made that up? <laughs> <laughs> well, there is some kernels of truth in this. So there had actually been an accident. Two, in fact. One that definitely featured McCartney. Oh. But but that was actually a moped accident in which Paul chipped a tooth and scarred his lip. And um, supposedly that was a reason why he started growing a mustache, which was to hide the, hide the scarring on his lip. Oh. The second being Paul's car, which was being driven by a Moroccan art gallery assistant, being involved in a crash that resulted in that man, who was not Paul, but driving Paul's car, being hospitalised. And the uh, the car, the Mini, being wrecked. Right. Where was Paul? He was in Mick Jagger's Mini, of course. Can't tell if this is that's another a, Rolling Stones joke. That's, that's, that's not a joke. Okay. That's actually what happened. Okay. <laughs> Paul decided he was going to... He was going to go in Mick Jagger's uh, Mini instead of driving his own. Oh. And uh, he gave the keys to a, a an art gallery assistant who was with them. And uh, yeah, he totaled, totaled the car. Oh my gosh. Was that like a lucky escape? Or did he just know that the guy was like, probably not the best at driving and went, you can take it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if he had, uh, it, he would have driven. I don't think he would be driving the, the gallery assistant. Mm. It's just he decided... Oh, you know what? I'm going to go in Mick Jagger's Mini because um, maybe his Mini's a bit bigger than mine. It was a maxi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this seems to be the origin of the rumours, but the fan magazine was obviously quite keen not to alarm its rabid fan base that one of the top four best Beatles was dead. So, as we saw, it was quite clear that it was indicated that it was a false rumour. However, it did also coincide with the Beatles retiring from stage performances in 1966. So that may have worried some. But soon, Paul was appearing in photos and videos and 
nobody really thought a thing about this silly little rumor again until the 12th of October, 1969. In Detroit, a radio DJ, Russ Gibb, no relation to Barry, Robin, or Maurice, (laughs) was hosting his regular DJ slot on WKNR-FM when he received a call on air from a man who only referred to himself as Tom, who claimed that Paul McCartney was actually dead. And he demanded that the DJ play the Beatles song Revolution No. 9 backwards to reveal the truth. Oh, right. Let's do that now. Okay. And and see what it says. Okay, Linz. So you've just you've just heard it. You've just heard the compelling evidence. Yeah. Now not everybody at home listening to that may have been able to work out what was said backwards. So can you can you fill us in? It doesn't sound like anything. It sounds like just gibberish. It sounds like Primion Headman or something. <laughs> oh. Which isn't words, but something headman, which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> You're very close. What it actually supposedly says is turn me on dead man. Ew, I don't like that. I just I'm alone and I just got a shiver. Can I hear it again? N- now it. knowing. And for everyone at home, I suppose. Now. Yeah. All right. Number nine. Let's go. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Ew. Oh, I hate I hate stuff like that when I'm alone. Like anything backwards, any like kind of EVP style thing. Any, um, mm-hmm. you know, those recordings of like exorcisms. Oh God, it reminds me of those. I really don't like that. And the first EVP that I ever heard as a child was this, it was on some daytime talk show and it said a similar thing. It was like, I think it said, it's me, Hallam, the dead man. And it sounds exactly like this. And I really hate it for some reason. I just don't like it. <laughs> All right. So we did it say turn it's me hi i'm the problem (laughs) probably like 20 years in the future they'll be saying that but um yeah (laughs) so turn yeah but then again turn me on dead man is kind of a really weird thing to say it's kind of erotic in Mm. in the direction of paul mccartney (laughs) or do they mean like turn the record on but then it would be like a vinyl so you wouldn't turn it on you just drop the needle I don't know. It might be it might be referring to sort of turn me on, like turn my track on, maybe for recording it. <gasps> oh, you've just of, made like you've creeped me out so bad. Yeah. Like turn my turn my turn whatever the line on or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of you know what I didn't realize there's a lot of mistakes and just random stuff in Beatles music that I had no idea, but you think about how they're recording it at the time. You know, on the marathon sessions that we're doing, yeah, there's a there's there's a lot of just very very random stuff that I think is could be a um, <gasps> sorry, sort of. Oh my god, I don't mean to interrupt to cabin you fever. or alarm you, but your voice just went really garbled in my ear. <laughs> oh god, no! <laughs> You've unleashed some ancient Paul McCartney power here. Sorry to interrupt. That just really <laughs> freaked me out for a second. So Tom claimed that Paul had died in that car accident in 1966, but had somehow been replaced with a lookalike. And this lit a fire under the rumour as it began to roll. It gathered no moss, like a rolling uh, beetle. (laughs) Supposedly, this imposter was really called either William Campbell or Bill Shepherd, also known as Billy Shears. Although Fred Labore, who was listening that day, claimed that he invented William Campbell as a joke, 
Fred wrote a tongue-in-cheek article about Paul's death shortly afterwards for the Michigan Daily. However, it had the opposite effect of its intention, and rather than dispel the rumour, it actually spread it to a much wider audience who took it much more seriously. But wait, what's that we can smell? It's money. (laughs) And that radio DJ, Russ Megabucks Gibb, hosted a (laughs) one-hour TV special all about the rumor that Paul was dead and spread it to an even wider audience stateside. So we can see the origin of this this rumor. Mm -hmm. We can see it's based at least partially in in reality in so much it was a car accident. It did feature Paul's car. The problem was Paul wasn't in it. But now we can see how this is beginning to pick up steam. We've had, you know... it's appeared on a radio show, and then it's in the press, and then it's in it's on TV. And before you know it, everyone's looking for clues everywhere that Paul McCartney is dead. And this started a little sort of mini fever of people investigating the Beatles. And we're going to do a little bit of that today to look at the evidence right. and see, you know, what, what, what how do we how do we find out? How do we find out that actually Paul McCartney? Is dead. But before we kind of dive into that, let's think about this for a second. Paul dies tragically. Purveyors of the rumor say that he was in this crashed mini in 1966 and was actually beheaded. Oh. John, George, and Ringo all sit around and decide to hold a contest for the best Paul lookalike, <laughs> in in secret, mind you, to continue milking the cash cow. That is the Beatles by this point <laughs> in their career. And, and you know, they, they happen to find someone who not only looks, but acts and also sounds exactly like Paul McCartney. It is the Christmas miracle. <laughs> they then continue to create albums with Billy, I mean Paul, fronting about half of the songs. So they don't push him to the back. If anything, he gets pushed even further forward. But the problem is... The guilt racks their conscience, and deliberately, the remaining Beatles leave a breadcrumb trail through their songs and album artwork to tell fans the truth, that Maka is brown bread. <laughs> All right, Chris, what are, what are these crumbs? Well, firstly, let's just talk about the reaction to this, the official reaction, because it did make its way to the Beatles. And while they were initially amused, this sort of wouldn't go away. The most surprised of all was Paul, who was fairly sure that he was still alive, and issued a statement (laughs) echoing Mark Twain, which read, Rumours of my death have been greatly exaggerated. John Lennon would later comment on the rumours, saying, What did we do? Stuff him and shave him? How could we do it? I don't understand what it's all about. <laughs> That's such a John Lennon thing to say. <laughs> I can't really do a good John Lennon. <laughs> Me. What was <laughs> like... that? Well, he, he's not really like. He's not. He's kind of got. They've all got weird accents, don't they? They're not really Liverpool accents. They're like. They're like oldie they're Liverpool odd. accents. Yeah. You know, what did we do? Stuff him and shave him? <laughs> How do we good. do it? <laughs> I don't understand what it's all about. <laughs> While Ringo said, if people are going to believe it, they're going to believe it. But I can only say it's not true. <laughs> George was mysteriously quiet about the subject perhaps racked by guilt that he had indeed stuffed and shaved Paul (laughs) before falling back on a doppelganger. Who can say? (laughs) That the silence is incriminating in itself. Well, the conspiracy states that it was actually Britain's MI5 that was behind the hoax. Right, and... Okay, why? You You see, they feared that should the news of Paul McCartney's death get out, 
that there would be mass suicide of Beatles fans all around the world. I mean, th then probably not wrong. <laughs> people did go ham for the I Beatles. I think the word mass might be a bit wrong, but people would certainly be. Well, what, what um, you know, what counts as mass? More than 10? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> um, supposedly, MI5 found a lookalike in Canada. Oh. There had been, this was shortly after a legitimate lookalike contest that was held by a radio station that took this Paul or Fall, that's Paul with an F as fans have come to terms, uh, <laughs> have come to term the imposter, and implanted him into the Beatles. But what I what I can provide you with is a before and after. So this is early Paul McCartney and latter Paul McCartney. And what people are saying is that just the shape of everything is is just that little bit off. It's like an Aldi brand Paul McCartney. <laughs> okay. Um, to me, that is 100% the same man. <laughs> it's definitely Paul McCartney. But he's just got a bit older and he's matured. He's a... Uh... Yeah, he's changed a little bit, but that's definitely him. I mean, are they talking about like, you know, his eyes are a bit more downturned, his brows are a bit lower. Mm -hmm. The shape of the mouth is supposedly different. Ah, but he's... The shape of the jawline, especially. I don't think so. I think he's just grown up a bit, hasn't he? How old was he in the first one? Uh, well, there'd be early days. I mean, you're only talking a matter of years between them. Yeah, You're but not talking about imagine like it's it's kind of interesting like how you can change because like obviously he's gone from not like really young to really old, but obviously there's been like growth there. And I to me that looks like the same man. Maybe he's a bit more he's a bit more youthful and sort of like shocked in the first one, and in the second one he looks a bit more laid back and uh, to me, that's the same guy. I mean, I can't see the ears, but the ears are always like, apparently that's what you should look at. And they look mm. like they're probably the same ears, just covered up with a lot more hair. The nose is the same. Obviously, is Well, we could talk a lot about the ears. I'm not going to, because you can have a look at this yourself. Yeah. But there are YouTube videos out there comparing uh, the ears, supposedly. Yeah, it was the same ears. with the Somerton no. Man, remember? The, the whole ear mm -hmm. thing, how unique ears are and... But they, they are a, a sure, like, way to, to see. You know, that's one of the first things you should. Oh, mm -hmm. right. And, and here's, a, here's another little comparison, you know. Every 10 years, you can see right. the difference from 1953 to 2023. Oh, this is um, And, of is course, that, that awkward time in 2013 when he turned into a woman. <laughs> okay, so this is amazing. So from 1953 to 2003, we'll post this on, on the Instagram at d.s.radio. But I love this. So it's just McCartney through the years. And we're basically just watching him age. So in 1953, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> that looks nothing like him. He's too young. Okay, so 63 is the Paul McCartney that I think of when I imagine him. Probably because I like that mm -hmm. early era of their music. But yeah, he does look quite different from 63 to 73. Obviously, 10-year gap different style style is everything you know like a haircut mm -hmm. can change someone like so much so when we get to the 80s he's he's kind of got chosen one hairstyle and ran with it for the rest of time you know what he's Nothing gone wrong for with that. He's, <laughs> you know what he's gone for he's gone for like the the korean trick of like you pretend to have the center part, but it's slightly off in the front to like frame your face better. So he's gone for that, like like a feathered kind of number. And he's just never really deviated until, like you say, Chris, 2013, where the emo era may have gotten to him and he might want it to feel like youthful. And he's gone for the Davy Havoc sort of side part and <laughs> <laughs> like makeup. But I, I'm saying makeup. Maybe there's no makeup there, but I'm seeing like he shaped his eyebrows a bit. Maybe, allegedly, they're, they're thinner anyway. And he does look mm. very. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's just a weird picture. 
<laughs> it looks like all, all, all you wanted I'm, to feel young. <laughs> all I'm saying is 2003 looks fairly normal. That's the year Sing the Sorrows released. In 2013, as you say, he's all emo. That's what I'm saying. Like, like my theory is, it's definitely him, but he just, he probably saw an AFI music video and went, you know what? That's what the, the youth like. In 2013, 2003 to 2013, I'll try and do a bit of an emo thing. And then in 2023, I think he looks pretty good. He's like, I'm not following trends anymore. I'm just this guy. (laughs) Oh, sorry. 2013 has just tickled me. (laughs) But honestly, to me, right, I think that... That looks like the same guy. I think the biggest shift is between 83 and 93. I don't know if the the LSD caught up with him or what. Like, I don't know what's going on there. He looks kind of like Timmy Mallet in 1993. I think he just was inspired by different figures from TV and the media. (laughs) Right. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking enough. Enough. Enough with the conspiracy. (laughs) What? What evidence do we have mm. that the Beatles supposedly left to point us true believers to the truth? Let's cover some of the main points, although I will say we don't have time to get into everything today. Um, if you keep looking for clues, you'll find more and more and more and more and more of them. Yes. So, you know, feel free this to do your own Googling around topic. this subject. <laughs> um, but we have to look at first that perhaps they weren't so coy about introducing Billy Shears as Paul's replacement. They hid him in plain sight. Does that name mean anything to you, Linz? Billy Shears. No, no, can't say it does. Listen to to the beginning of of this, uh, from Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the song With a Little Help from My Friends. my god yes wait i've never actually picked up on that before i don't think i ever knew what they said are they actually saying billy shears that yep yeah, that is that is what they're saying but it is up for debate who that person is Billy shears. Uh, is it paul mccartney's you know you know uh replacement is it a character is it supposed to be somebody within the Sergeant Peppers, you know, there's, there's all kinds of answers to who it could be. <laughs> but if we take a look, if you take a look at that, um, the album art, mm-hmm. there's a plethora of clues hidden within this. Now, on the back cover, which it, you don't have there, but the only beetle that is not facing the camera is Paul. So on the back cover, the only beetle that is not facing the camera, you've guessed it, it's Paul. And he's also wearing a black armband, a symbol of mourning. Oh my gosh. Like, so was he just playing into the rumours? No, this was kind of prior to to everything. It's just, well, there's two ways to look at it. It's either a a big... uh, big series of clues or it is um just all coincidental people reading things into things that you know aren't actually there Mm -hmm. the front cover is full i mean it's a very famous front cover this there's all kinds of of people on the front cover it's all pasted together and you've got um you've got the the modern day band in the center of the image and above paul mccartney's head there is a hand, and that hand is of British singer Issy Bon, but that isn't important. But the hand above the head is a symbol of death in some cultures. <gasps> and indeed, some have read that the band appeared to be stood in front of some kind of grave or memorial, which indeed features a left-handed guitar-shaped instrument, Paul famously being a lefty. Oh my gosh, you're right. Like it does, like from a British eye, it looks like funeral flowers. Oh my God. Yeah, that's very creepy. Mm. 
Some even say that if you squint, you can read the name Paul in those yellow flowers. Oh, oh, okay, I'm doing it. Wait. I mean, if if that's what you want to see. I, I mean, you, you might have to squint so hard that you close your eyes and make up your own image. It looks more but... like N-F-U-C-D. <laughs> N-R-U. I don't know. It does not like Paul. But if you really want to believe, <laughs> mm. I'm sure you can. Well, another part of this rumor on here, which you don't need to, to zoom into because it's actually in the linear notes, is that Paul has a patch on his arm that reads OPD that some people have termed, stands for officially pronounced dead. However, this was actually OPP, and it's from the Ontario Police Department for some unknown reason. Ah, okay. <laughs> so Lynn's convinced yet? Chris, no. I'm sorry. I mean, no. We've, we've got a, a, a car crash that he was not involved in. There was some coincidences, but like you said, it's just a coincidence. We've got an album cover where he's just being quirky. I mean, that's not unusual for Paul McCartney, especially back in the days. We have some pictures of him aging like a regular human. <laughs> so no, I don't I don't think Paul McCartney's dead. I mean, hopefully not today on his birthday either. But no, I, I'm not convinced. No. Well, well, okay. How about this? At the end of the song, Strawberry Fields Forever, John screams, I buried Paul. Does he? Well, I'm, well, I mean, that's not official. Officially, he says cranberry sauce. <laughs> but like, nobody actually likes cranberry sauce. So why would we be talking about that? I mean, he can't be talking about the worst part of Christmas dinner. You don't like cranberry sauce? Lindsay. I'm very aware that most of our listeners are American. So let me do that one again. So, I mean, he can't really be talking about the worst part of Thanksgiving dinner. Am I right? Ye no way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Could be the it's, Catholic it's, Everything sounds very weird <laughs> backwards. Um, well, no. uh, just, just to, uh, to help you out here, let's go back to backmasking. Oh, no. Chris. Let's play... Play this one in, in reverse. Um, so how about this one? Have a listen to it. This appears uh, on one of the Beatles' albums between I'm So Tired and Blackbird. Let's, uh, let's listen and try and decipher what is said here. Oh, God. Okay. Answers on a postcard. So, what do you think that says? That was Paul is a dead man, right? It was very, yeah, it's, it's, it's very close. Paul is a oh dead man. Miss him, miss him, miss him. Okay. Oh. Let's listen to that one more okay. time. I'll, I'll put it in here. So as you can see, there are a plethora of clues that people can interpret as to um, Paul actually being dead within the songs themselves. Some of uh, the lyrics and even their titles might reference Paul's death. Supposedly, the song Octopus's Garden is a reference Octopus's to Paul's Garden. death. Any idea what that could mean? Mm. No. It's another Ringo song. I'd like to be. What? I've under never heard that. <laughs> in an octopus's garden. I don't think that's really. what it means, Chris. <laughs> well, octopus's garden is supposedly mm. navy slang for graveyard. Oh. Is it actually? It's all the information. Okay. That there you know is what? I, I'm still scared of the Paul is dead miss him miss him because that actually sounded like what it was <laughs> it is mm, the root the, the the evidence is getting stronger and 
possibly the strongest is the front cover of the Abbey Road EP. And this is frequently referenced as sort of the best evidence that we have that Paul McCartney is no longer with us. So, so Linz, right. take a look is and uh, the, yeah, say what you see. Yeah, the famous zebra crossing. So we have just the Beatles walking over a zebra crossing. Um, oh, Paul's got no shoes on. And he has a cigarette, I think. It's a bit mm. pixely. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just the four Beatles walking across the zebra, um, zebra crossing. It's that iconic picture here in London. There's some old school cars. But yeah, he's got no shoes and a cigarette. Those are two very important elements. But you would be wrong, Linz, in saying, oh, it's just the Beatles. Because there's it's actually a lot of oil. imagery going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, let's... Let's take a look at John, dressed all in white at the front. What, what do you think he's representing? A cocaine dealer, by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> he does know um, where he can get you some great love. Is this some kind of, like, purity thing? Well, cl close. He's supposed to represent, uh, or the theory says, he's representing some kind of heavenly figure or angel, if you will, dressed all in white. Yeah, like a... I mean, he is pretty much mm -hmm. doing the Jesus look at this point. So, I mean, hell, let's just go with that. Yeah, he's got a, a beautiful long head of hair and he's, mm. yeah, very Jesus, very pure. So then we have, is that, who's that? It's Jesus? Ringo. No, who's Ringo. Ringo behind him. Ringo in a black kind of funeral look. Ah, suit, to be you honest. put it in one. So supposedly mm -hmm. Ringo represents the Undertaker. Not, not the... Not the Undertaker, but Ringo does have a wicked tombstone pile driver. <laughs> or at least that's what the Wait, groupies say. So behind him, we've got Paul Bearer. <laughs> <laughs> but he is supposedly representing an Undertaker, dressed all in black. Wait. Wait. Now with the links you've given me, right? Behind Ringo is Paul. Paul Bearer. Uh, Bear oh. <laughs> oh, you've just added a new of law to this <laughs> and is what's he in is that dark denim or it, is it's it blue just a linen? regular old suit so he's representing the uh, the every man the, the the one who is the man, man himself um, yeah. and as you mentioned he's the only one with no shoes yeah you don't yeah. need those when you're he shows dead do you? he no longer walks the same path as us <laughs> he's also out of step oh. with the others all the others are perfectly in sync but Paul is out of step. Uh, oh. It's probably quite rough on the heels without probably. a shoe, though. Probably have to do the flat-footed method to mm. cross that road. <laughs> he's also holding a cigarette, as you mentioned. But the crucial part here mm. is he's holding it in the wrong hand for a lefty like him. N not, a, not a commie. I mean, just a left-handed person. <laughs> A regular Satanist. <laughs> George. <gasps> yeah, okay. George is, is following up closely behind, dressed in a... Canadian yep, tuxedo. dressed in a Canadian tuxedo of, of double <laughs> denim. And he represents... Um, uh, I no, Bruce Springsteen fan? <laughs> I don't know. He represents the grave digger. <laughs> Ah, okay, okay. I mean, I'm not sure that's what a grave digger wears, grave but okay. <laughs> they probably do like a good pair of <laughs> Levi's. But yet, even <laughs> more details exist here, Linz. Do you see that car on the left, mm -hmm. the white one? The, mm. the I don't bug, expect yeah. you to read this uh, here, um, but the number plate reads L M W. 281F or if you read it in a certain way 28 if which is supposedly oh, saying what? Paul would be 28 <laughs> if he was still alive 
at this point. Um, in reality, it would have been 27, but who lets facts get in the way of a good conspiracy? <laughs> Not us here on DSR, that too. <laughs> 27 mm. Club. 28 If He Survived, The Rockstar Lifestyle. I think I'm adding layers to this. Some have also suggested that the <laughs> LMW on the license plate stands for Linda McCartney Weeps. Of course, he hadn't actually met Linda McCartney, let alone married her, by the time of the supposed accident in 1966. But fuck schmacks, I say. <laughs> but that was all set exactly. up, wasn't it? That was just part of the plan. <laughs> Other circumstantial evidence exists and uh, appears on the Magical Mystery Tour cover, for example. You don't need to look this up, but just uh, the three Beatles are are Trust all wearing me, red roses <laughs> on their suit while Paul's is black. And finally, my favorite mm. detail about all of this is that supposedly, according to those in the know, the Beatles would give away an island in the Mediterranean to whomever worked out Paul's fate through the clues first. Which is exactly what anyone would do if your best friend had died and you needed to cover it up to continue your career with a lookalike in the room every day reminding you of your dead friend, Paul McCartney, beheaded and now replaced with a literal dead ringer so that you can never, ever forget, right? <laughs> That's what you do. You give away an island like some sort of macabre supermarket sweep. <laughs> One of us is actually dead and the other one is AI. It's probably me because you know what Chris is like with his <laughs> AI. <laughs> As the story goes, there is a secret phone number that the clues will lead you towards. Call it and win an island. Except it's probably gone by now. Yuri Geller got there first. <laughs> no, we only like buy uninhabitable spaces. <laughs> so let's, um, let, let's oh. talk about it, Lens. Paul McCartney. What do you think? Did he die in 1966? And was he replaced for the remaining time with the Beatles and beyond? I feel like I've died and you've replaced me with AI. And like a Lindsay's dead theory is going to pop up in the DSR community. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, Paul McCartney, is he? I don't, you know what? I love it. Like, I love this theory. And I love, like, it was so fun to just look at that picture and try to, like, the whole, like, um, afterlife, um, funeral goer, Paul bearer thing, like, grave digger. I feel like that is so fun just to look at that picture and just try to, like, make connections. And I think, like, people are kind of built to make connections. We're really good at making connections where there isn't any just humans in general and like recognizing patterns and trying to make sense of things, which I think is probably what's going on here. I think it would be really, f I don't want to say it would be really fun if Paul McCartney was beheaded and replaced with somebody else, but like the, the game of trying to like pretend that that's a thing. Mm. is quite fun. But I think Paul McCartney is very much alive. He's still with us. Um, I, I like, I prefer the idea that he's still alive and with us because if not, there's just an old man who's still living the dream <laughs> with his feathered hair. I don't know. This freaks, like all of it freaks me out. I, I think Paul is alive. I think, like you said, it's fucking ridiculous if he died and they did all that to replace him. I think, right. Isn't there a story that... The Beatles, like when they were, were on tour once, they did have to replace, was it the drummer? For like one show. And it went so badly. Like there was a guy who was like in the Beatles for one night. Uh, Do you oh, know that? I'm not sure. I know it was, Pe Pe was it Peter Suff. I, I'm pretty was, was like, the drummer I'm, before? May, I don't, maybe, no. I don't know. No, I think this was just a guy who like had to fill in for like a date on tour somewhere. Like, don't quote me on this, but I watched something once and like he had to fill in for like a night and it just went so terribly wrong and they just like sent him off the next day or something. So I think you cannot replace a Beatle. You cannot replace Paul McCartney. Although 
His bass lines did change. Mm. Oh my God. Now I'm like, <laughs> no, you can't replace a beetle. Like they tried and it never worked. You could replace it like before they got going. <laughs> What do you think, Chris? Where, where do you stand? I'm feeling like you're believing Paul McCartney. Uh, Damn it! You know, I think it's a really fun theory. I love looking for clues and finding little things like this. But I do think mm-hmm. it is highly unlikely that this is the case. Uh, uh, but it is fun to talk about. I think it's far more likely that Hitler escaped than Paul McCartney <laughs> was replaced. My biggest worry is, yeah, my biggest worry is that whenever, whenever we talk about something, something happens. And I don't like that idea <laughs> that we're cursing Paul McCartney as we speak. <laughs> Remember the Summerton mm-hmm. Man? Like we did, like after years of trying to do it, not being able to do it, when we finally did it, it got solved, which was a good thing. But I feel like cases we touch tend to change quickly after. And I fear we are cursing the current day actual Paul McCartney with this episode. And I hope that's not the case because I'm feeling really superstitious mm. about it. Happy birthday, James. <laughs> we hope we don't um, we don't bring anything. Oh. Uh, don't yeah. cog it, please. We'll feel so guilty. Yeah, I think as fun as this theory is for everyone who isn't Paul and his immediate family, uh, the likelihood of <laughs> replacing somebody wholesale and getting away with it is minuscule, let alone for somebody in the public eye in the modern day like McCartney. Now, Paul has addressed the rumours over the years from time to time, stating that he is very much still here and maybe people did a few too many drugs and thought that he died. <laughs> maybe he did a few too many drugs and thought he was still alive. You ever thought about that's that, McCartney? That's keeping him alive at this point. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> so, but Paul McCartney is not the only star to be accused of being replaced. Lindsay mentioned it at the beginning who else? Avril Lavigne. She's been replaced with Melissa. Yes, supposedly yeah. she was replaced with a lookalike <laughs> called Melissa in 2003, full-time, when the real Avril passed away. Before then, <laughs> Avril had used Melissa on and off as she struggled with the fame in the early days. Apparently there was a tell, which was that Avril preferred to wear pants, but Melissa, more of a dressy kind of gal. And certainly... There's no plausible scenario where one woman could wear both on two different days. (laughs) Are body doubles a real thing? Well, yes, kind of. Certain historical leaders would use body doubles at times, like, you know, Adolf Hitler, as we covered before. Think about Princess Amidala in Star Wars, (laughs) episode one. Uh, But rarely does it work in the modern day. My voice broke there. But rarely does it work in the modern day. (laughs) But a few notable examples that we can look at. In 1944, shortly before D-Day, a soldier, M.E. Clifton James, happened to bear a remarkably close resemblance to Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, a major Allied leader, and was sent to Gibraltar and then to North America in order to deceive the Germans about the location of the coming invasion by the Allies, which would, of course, take place at Normandy. Would you like to take a look at these two gentlemen? Oh, definitely. Show me these twins. Get those (laughs) twins out. So here they are. No relation to each other. (laughs) Sorry. I mean... Yeah, I guess... They both have very similar hats. (laughs) Maybe from a, like, really far away. Um, one looks a lot older. Mm. I think that's that was the idea. We're getting Steptoe and, Steptoe and Son vibes from this. Maybe it's all the Beatles talk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, rumors also <laughs> about it that Saddam Hussein and Kim Jong-un frequently used body doubles. Saddam Hussein's son mm-hmm. certainly did. But obviously he was much less in the limelight than his father. And that's the kind of problem. It's quite easy to tell a fake these days. People's images are everywhere. I mean, the the Beatles must have been one of the most photographed um, groups in the world at that point. You know, every image, every line 
of the various people's faces would have been etched into teenagers' minds all across the world. It'd be very difficult to pull something like that off. But in the older days, when photographs weren't as readily available and perhaps just descriptions or maybe uniforms were, then it could be entirely plausible for a king to have somebody go and sit on his throne for a day because he couldn't be bothered to get out of bed. <coughs> Henry VIII. <laughs> Generally, though, in the modern day, body doubles are either professionally hired, for example, as stunt doubles, um, or they may try to make a living through their resemblance to a famous person, which is often an unwanted form of body doubles, such as C such as Steve Sires, CEO of Micro Sort of, and Bill Gates impersonator. <laughs> Micro Sort of. Or Chantel Houghton, a minor Big Brother celebrity in the UK, who had previously tried and failed to make a living as a Paris Hilton impersonator and was subsequently nicknamed Paris Travel Lodge. <laughs> but I suppose the true mark of a body double, Paul McCartney or otherwise, is that you would never know. Maybe they are the person next to you as you're listening to this. Had they been replaced? Maybe a family member. Maybe you are a replacement. Maybe we are. This is a dystopia after all. I do feel like I look a little bit like Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Lynn's and Paul McCartney. Put them next to each other. I couldn't tell the difference. Put a yeah. wig on him, you know. <laughs> so, Lynn's, that's, the, that's today's episode on Paul McCartney and body doubles. So, final verdict. What are you going with here? Is Paul McCartney dead? God willing, he's still alive as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, he's alive. He's definitely alive. I think he went through, through some phases with his image. Everyone ages and, you know, as you get older, you might want to try out Davy Havoc style circa Art of Drowning. Um, all been there. That's on you. But... <laughs> But no, I think he's I think he's alive and I hope he's alive when this episode comes out. God damn you, DSR curse. But no, I think I'm not with uh not with the conspiracy on this one. I think he uh I think he's irreplaceable, is Paul McCartney. What about you, Chris? Mm, I also believe that he's still alive. I as I said, as fun as this theory is, I don't think it holds any water, but I do like a good conspiracy, um, as you well know. But and you did, I did call him. Um, and he cursed me out. I'll see if I can give him a call again and see um, if he can give us any feedback uh, on the episode once this has been released. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so thank you very much uh, for listening to this today. I'd like to thank the Beatles Bible for the concise timeline of events that was essential in my research for this episode. And I hope, Linz, that you're just going to, you know, question things a little bit more. Is... Yeah, More than no. usual. Are, are my favorite <laughs> favorite this... bands still them? I mean, it would explain why they make shit music now. <laughs> you need to move on, Chris. <laughs> but honestly, this episode was like so enjoyable. And I didn't know any of that, actually. I knew there was a Paul is dead theory, but I didn't know the details. As usual, I've been... um. Not researching the big conspiracy theories, but I did know about Melissa. Mm, no. <laughs> I, 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 of all the things that I thought you might know about in this episode, that was not one of them. <laughs> Late night YouTube, <laughs> trying to sleep, you know. Sometimes you just got to click whatever video comes up. <laughs> well, thank you very much for listening. Next time, it's going to be your story, Linz, and I can't wait to hear it. But until then, we hope you all have a hard day's night. Do we? Or a, um, a, <laughs> Listen, have a nice have, day. Good everyone. morning, sunshine. <laughs> Thank you. For and um, yes. Uh, here, here comes here the sun, comes the sun on the long and winding road. Um, just let it, you know, let it be, and um, 
help. <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Walking down Abbey Road, stories been told. Paul is gone, they said. Is he alive? Is he dead? Paul is dead, they cry in a whisper and sigh. Can you hear his voice? Did we lose our choice? Fans in the streets, they weep. The mystery runs deep. Clues and songs they found in the records spinning. Did we lose our choice? Backward tracks and hidden lines. People see the signs. We look for the truth inside. Is it something we can hide? Pictures of him we see, but is it really he? A world of rumors spread. Goes in our head. Paul is dead, they cry in a whisper inside. Can you hear his voice? Did we lose our choice? Backward tracks and hidden lines. People see the signs. Look for the truth inside Is it something we can hide? Pictures of him we see But is it really he? A world of rumors spread Echoes in our head You know, I sing that song so much around the fucking house. That's what my granddad did. I think it's what happens when you like have a child <laughs> or a grandkid. <laughs> You've got you've got to do it in uh in the in the Ringo voice film. <laughs> it's illegal not to. In the town where I was, where I was born, <laughs> lived a Paul McCartney. He might have been AI. <laughs> Either way, he's dead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>